Hey there, Photo Universe. Okay, so we got uh, K3 on the table. We got uh, K52S on the table. And it's really kind of interesting. You know, you go up on the forums, the preview, for example, and uh, you've got people up there that uh, I don't know what the story is. Um, they bought a K3 and they uh, took some shots with it and the shots weren't sharp and so obviously the camera sucks. And then they're attacking everyone else over it, like, whatever. I mean, and the funny part of it is, is like the people who are, like there's a couple, you know, the people who are doing this, like, where's your credentials? You know, who are you to judge that that camera sucks? When, I mean, we don't know if you know what you're doing or not, right? Now, you can watch my 93 videos on Photo Universe and you can come to the conclusion that, I mean, what's a reasonable conclusion? Do I mean, do I, do I have delusions of what I'm doing? Um, my presentation style is rustic. That's being diplomatic. There's people laughing right now. I know who you are. Um, I get that. I get that. Do I not know what I'm talking about when it comes to photography? Really? I mean, you know, so my point is, is you, you, you take what I have to say and base it upon my reputation of what I've said in the past and the work that I've shown and my P-Base account. And then when I say the K3 is a sharp camera, you know, does that have a little bit more weight than some wanker who comes up and he's like, hey, the camera's garbage, it's the Smudgemeister? K3 is a Smudgemeister? Dude, Smudge, I did it once. If it can do it once, then it can always do it. And uh, if it can always do it, then it's not, a, not, a, not, a, it's not an unsharp camera, right? Do you have unsharp technique? Do you have bad lenses? Cheap, you know, gar inadequate lenses? Maybe. But we don't know, do we? Because we don't know who you are. We don't know. What, do you have a YouTube channel? Do you, you know, do you have some professional work we can see on your website? I, I, I don't, this isn't an attack. I'm just saying, like, it's kind of weird how the, you know, the Internet gives everyone equal weight. And I'm not sure what's up with that. And maybe it doesn't. I mean, obviously it doesn't because there's people that see through that. You know, for the, for the one guy who's given me a hard time or people a hard time on the K3 when they, they're trying to show him that it is a sharp camera, uh, there's 20, 30, 50 guys that are like, Ed, thanks so much, man. You make so much sense. This is, you know, yeah, you know, and, and the criticism I get, the, the, the presentation styles, not so good. Yeah, I get that. It's not so good. Right, okay. Um, and, I, and I appreciate that. You're right. I'm going to work harder to make that better. But uh, what, what I'm saying, I think, resonates and has some weight and how it makes some sense. So now, what, what, now, now, in fairness to these people that are like, K3 is a lousy camera, what are some possibilities there? Why, why do they have that perception? I mean, obviously, there's a disconnect between their perception and, I will say, reality, okay, because... In my 35, 30 year photographic career, having shot 35 millimeter, medium format, four by five film, worked in my own darkroom. I've had gallery shows opposite Christopher Burkett in Oregon, here at the Photographic Image Gallery when they were still in business. I mean, I've had fine art landscape shows with my black and white. I'm, I'm not bragging, I'm just saying. This is, this is what I'm bringing to the table here. This is what I'm using as my criteria to judge the K3, okay, the reality is it's one of the sharpest cameras I've ever used, uh, digital or otherwise. And um, where's this perception coming from? That, that Where's this noise coming from on the forums that the K3 is not a sharp camera? I mean, the reality is there is noise on the forums that the K3 is not a sharp camera and the K52S somehow is better or something. Uh, or, or maybe the K52S isn't better, but the K3 is not a sharp camera. Where is that noise coming from? Why? Why? Is, is, it, is it a bunch of Canon people and Nikon people feeling insecure and just trolling? I, I don't think so. Um, I, think there's, I think there's some validity. Some, there's no validity to the fact that the K3 is an unsharp camera. There is validity that, there's, that, 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 that a, a few small vocal minority has that perception and is trying to... Uh, spread that it's not a sharp camera. L let's 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 go into that. Part of the reason why I think part of the reason why is because of the K52S. Okay, and what has come before it. All right. Um, the K52S 
was one of those cameras that was really interesting because it came on the heels of four years of the K5. And then we had the K5 II, which was basically image quality. If you could get a sharp image on a K5, you could get a sharp image on a K5 II. And if you could get a sharp image on a K5 and a K5 II, you could get a sharp image on a K5-2S. Okay, the people who adopted the K5-2S already had their 16 megapixel technique that the, the learning curve was on the K5. All right, they were there. Remember, in Pentax land, we've also had very small incremental jumps. I wasn't around for the party from the IS, I had an ISTD seven, eight years ago. I wasn't around for the party from ISTD to K5, but there was the K10, the K20, the whatever else there was. And I mean, I think we went 10 megapixel, like the K, ISTD I know was six. So I think we went 10, we went 12, we went 15 with the K7, and, or 14, and then we went 16 with the K5. And every time it was a small incremental jump and people were able to, there wasn't this dramatic, Going from a K5-2S or the K5 series with that 16 megapixel sensor to a 24 megapixel sensor, that's like the largest jump that Pentax has made. That's one of the issues. Okay. The K5, the K, the K, pardon me, the K3 has the highest pixel density of any camera right now. It's got a higher pixel density than the D800. When the D800 came out, Nikon shooters, and most of them, you know, were pretty much on the ball, I think. They were coming from a long list of cameras, right? When the D800 came out, there were Nikon shooters that were freaking, because all of a sudden they weren't getting sharp pictures at all. The only thing different in Nikon land is for all those guys whose technique wasn't up to scratch, there were 10 professionals up there whose technique was up to scratch and pretty quickly the D800 turned out like so you're not getting sharp images well guess what look at what Joe McNally just did holy smokes right it's not the camera it's you let's back up a minute here's another way to look at this so we went from 35 millimeter let's say we're back in film days let's say these are film cameras right and the K52S is medium format and the K3 is 4x5 all right well, if a photographer is cooking along, you know, a keen amateur, whatever, really into it, and he's cooking along, and he went to medium format, and he's loving those results, and then he goes to 4x5, and he spends all his money, and buys himself a 4x5 camera, and lenses, and film holders, and film, and he sets up his darkroom, and all the rest of it. And all of a sudden, he goes out there, and all of a sudden, his pictures suck, and they're not sharp. He's not in a vacuum, Right? He's not going to get on an internet forum and go, man, 4x5 just sucks, right? Because 4x5 wasn't just invented. Because if he got up on the forum and said, 4x5 sucks, it's a, 4x5 is a smudge master. These cameras blow. Well, somebody's going to come back and go, I don't know, Ansel Adams seemed to do pretty good with it. Right? Okay. So, the, Pentax is having a problem here because... There, are, there is no Joe McNally in Pentax land. There aren't like guys that are Pentax professionals like there are Nikon professionals. Like if you buy a D800, the, the, right, and all of a sudden the forums start going, this isn't a sharp camera. Like all of a sudden you're going to get a bunch of people jumping you saying, well, check this workout and check that workout by this pro and that pro. And, and you're looking at the work going, well, if the pros are using it and they're getting good results. That's not happening with the K3, and it's going to take a lot longer before that happens because there aren't too many pros that are using it, okay? I'm a professional. I happen to be one of them. I'm not blowing my own horn here, but what I'm saying is, right, <clears throat> I'm confident in saying what I'm saying because I've taken this camera out, and I've been down this road with film, with the D200 to D300. I've been down this road where I get a camera, and all of a sudden, my pictures suck. And, I, I, and right away, my, your first inclination is, with digital particularly, because there's, there, it's unproven technology. Every time we get a new sensor, Ansel Adams didn't use that sensor. There's no photographer. You, you're one of the first people to get it if you bought it, when it relatively when it was first released, right? So, so now this sensor has been out in the D7100 or whatever it is. Other cameras have had this sensor. Sony, maybe not. I could be wrong here. Maybe other cameras have had the 24 megapixel sensor. Maybe they haven't. But you know what? 
This is the first time that this, I can tell you this I know for sure. This is the first time this sensor has been coupled with Pentax's processor, which is part of the equation. They, Pentax could have screwed it up. Pentax could have screwed it up. And ironically, or unfortunately, uh, there's precedent for that, right? So uh, no offense to the K7 people, but, and I've never owned a K20D, I've never owned a K7, but I do know from reading reviews and forum opinions and things like that, there seems to be a general consensus that the K20D was a sweet camera with a sweet sensor. And then the K7 came out with a little bit more megapixels, but I think it was a Samsung sensor. And you know what? The K7 does not have a reputation of having a great sensor in it. I've read that a few times by a few different people, okay? So, so if you were an early adopter of a K7 coming from a K20D, well, time has proven, proven out, that if you were an early, adop early adopter of a K7 and you weren't happy with your results coming from a K20D, maybe you were right, all right? Now, I know there's a lot of people out there with K7s that love them. I get that. You know, I could be wrong on that, but... But that, I've read that. That's the opinion that I've formed, okay? Not having personal experience with that. So we've got the new 24 megapixel sensor in with the new prime processing in the K3. And people in the back of people's minds is, is this a new deal where like, hey, we went from the K20D to the K7? Did we go from the K52S, which was the sweet spot? And we, you know, we, we were the low hanging fruit of the better AF and the better metering and the better flash metering and the faster frames per second um, and a little bit better interface, a little bit better video. Did, did we sacrifice the, our good sensor and our good image quality in order to get those things? And now this is like a K7 where the, where the sensor is not as good as the K52S, right? It's not as sharp, whatever. Um, so that's, 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 that's the doubt that's in people's minds. That's, that's what these, these, these naysayers are playing off of. And let me address that. And this is my opinion formed after having this camera for a few days and doing some testing and seeing the results which ended up on the floor over here. It's just a test print, so it's not like I'm going to frame this and sell it. Um, so, where are we at? The thing is, is that there's some issues here. And uh, let me throw this out there, because this might help people wrap their brain around it, okay? Let's go to Canon and Nikon right now, and let's see what's happening in their lineup, right? When I say this, the penny might drop and people might say, okay, I see where he's coming from. I didn't think of that. I get that. I know what's happening now. Okay. So but, uh, let's take Canon, for example. Canon's got the 5D Mark III, which is 22 me megapixels, right? And uh, we, had the, um, we had the 1DS Mark III, which was uh, 22 megapixels, 21 megapixels. That was the, K the uh, 5D Mark II sensor, same sensor, okay? Um, and Canon came out with the 5D Mark III and they went up to 22 megapixels. Um, and then Canon came out with the 1DX, which was their pro camera. And what happened with the 1DX? The 1DX is what? 18 megapixels? 17, 16, 17, 18? I know it's not more than 19. Okay, that's interesting. Now let's go to Canon land. No, no, I'm sorry, we were just there. Now let's go to Nikon land, right? So Nikon's got the D800, which is 36 megapixels. They've got the D600, which is 24 megapixels. And then Nikon's professional camera, the D4, is 18 megapixels, 16. Are we seeing a trend here? Why is that? What's going on? And the answer is, is that when you go to 24 megapixels, even in full frame, where you go 36 megapixels, you are sacrificing high ISO noise for resolution. And what the 1DX and the D4 are telling us is that for the real people who know what they're doing, your top professionals that think nothing is spending eight grand on a camera, Okay, and need it. it when, when you spend eight grand on a camera, that camera can't be professional enough. 
And what, these, what that's telling us is that the top professionals who understand the compromise between high resolution and high ISO image quality, noise, the, the sweet spot on a full frame camera is somewhere around 18 megapixels. Shocking. Okay. See where I'm going with this? Starting to make a little sense? Okay. So the K3 comes out because now who does Pentax cater to the most? They cater to advanced amateurs, semi-pros, right? So the same people that are buying the D800s, the D600s, the 5D Mark III's, right? That's, that's the market, okay? Are there pros using those other cameras? Yes, there are, right? Because it's Nikon, Canon, whatever. You have your 1DX maybe, and you have your Canon 5D Mark III too, also, right? So, um, but Pentax doesn't have a full frame, and they don't have a, a professional APS-C or whatever. They don't have that top tier $8,000, $7,000, $6,000 bulletproof, pull out all the stops pro level, right? They have, I think the K3 is a light pro, you know, just as the 5D Mark III, the D600, D800, those are light pros, right? They're not heavy pros, super, super duper top of the line, okay. So, the pros are making, are, are, are making that, they're, they're realizing that the compromise between high resolution and high ISO image quality is somewhere around 18 megapixels for a full frame camera, right? Well, interesting how, right, with these, with these lenses, interesting how that's where that plays out. Everybody seems to like the high ISO, high ISO noise on the K5 and K5 II and K5IIS. 16 megapixels, right? On the K5-2S, you're getting high resolution with no AA filter, no AA filter, and you're getting good K5 high ISO response. Kind of a sweet spot, isn't it? Well, you know, but in this market segment, the 800 D600 proves it, everybody wants high resolution. Not necessarily high ISO performance. So Pentax went high resolution, 24 megapixels, highest pixel density of any APS-C, right? Except for the other APS-Cs with 24 megapixels. Okay. Somebody made a comment on D-Preview, which now I understand is kind of brilliant. And they said, you know what? Pentax needs to come out with all of these advances of the better autofocus, the better metering, everything that's in the K3, and shove the K5-2S 16 megapixel sensor in it with that AA simulator on here, right? So that was a brilliant comment. At, at the time, I made a comment back that I, you know, I didn't think that was a great idea, that was stupid, just turn you know, whatever. But you know what, that's not, a, that was a brilliant comment. Um, that's what Nikon and Canon did with their full-frame professional line, right? Their, their top-of-the-line professional cameras are 18 megapixels, and their advanced amateur semi-pro cameras, light pro cameras, are the high, chasing the high resolution, okay? They have landscape cameras, then they have do-it-all high ISO photojournalist, maybe shoot a landscape every once in a while. You know, that comp... So we're at the point now where... There's a sliding compromise curve where you can go high resolution or high ISO, but you can't, you know, you can go high megapixel, high resolution or high ISO, but you can't, but you, you know, if you drop one, you get the other up and somewhere in the middle, which in full frame is around 18 megapixels and maybe in APS-C it's 16 megapixels. Does that make sense? So having said that, let's cut to the chase, right? The K5-2S is a much better high ISO camera if you're shooting straight out of, straight out of the camera, if you're not post-processing. So far, it seems that the K3 images are good at high ISOs, but not out of the camera. You need to post-process them. I think they, they actually handle post-processing high ISO better, but they're not as good out of the camera. So if you're going to be shooting like photojournalism with JPEGs and you shoot high ISO a lot, the K3 is not your camera. The K5-2S does a better job, even though, you know, the autofocus doesn't go all that stuff. Right, got it. But I, there, I said it. So, the K5-2S is a better camera than the K3. 
in that specific category, in the high in high ISO straight out of the camera. Okay, that's part of the perception here. All right. Um, <clears throat> Resolution wise, if your lenses aren't up to scratch or your technique isn't up to scratch and you're shooting at ISO 100 and you're not getting sharp images, that's because your technique or your, resolu or your, uh, or, or your lenses aren't up to scratch. That's the bottom line. If, if, you put this if you shoot this camera at ISO 100 and you put it up on a, camera, on a tripod and you use a good lens and you use good technique, it's going to be sharper than the K5-2S. There's just no getting around that. It is. There's no question about it. Um, um, once you get past ISO 800 and you're shooting JPEGs out of the camera, K5-2S all day long. The K3 is not going to hang with you. It's not going to hang. It's not going to. It's not going to compete with that, um, because that compromise. The, the the K3 is not a 1DX. The K5-2S is more of that compromise of that sacrifice ultimate resolution for higher ISO performance. Or to put it a different way, because it's that's not really true. The different way to put this is, Pentax, when they put the specs down on the K3, they were going for higher resolution, not necessarily better high ISO, low noise performance, and that might be part of the perception. If you get your, if you've been shooting your K5-2S handheld at ISO 3200 and you've been happy with your JPEGs, and you think that you and your pictures are awesome, if you get a K3 and you take it out of the box and you do the exact same thing, your pictures are gonna suck in comparison. And I could see where at that point, yeah, you would get that, that perception that it's not a sharp camera. But, what, what, but, but putting it into context and putting it into perspective, right? If you're shooting a K5-2S for landscapes and you're shooting ISO 100, on a tripod, shooting landscapes with good technique, with good lenses, and you get the K3 and you do the same thing, it's, be it's only better. And it's much nicer with the autofocus and the metering and everything else, okay? So there a person could, could take the K3 out of and that's kind of what's happening on the forums, right? There's some people who their technique is solid, their lenses are solid, they got their K3 and they're thrilled and they have no clue what, what these other guys are talking about. And in fairness to the guys who take the camera out of the box or gals that take the camera out of the box and they've been shooting, uh, is, is, is that bad technique to shoot ISO 3200 handheld? No, not at all. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you've been getting great shots with the K5-2S or K5-2, great, or even the K5. You know, excellent, that's awesome. But you know, you're not gonna be happy with the K3. You're gonna think the K3 sucks and, I, and that, that's valid. But you're not understanding that that's not what the K3, that's not, we're not at a point where everything upgrades anymore. I mean, it used to be when you went from one camera to the next, everything got better. You got higher resolution and higher uh, high ISO uh, quality, less noise at high ISOs. Those days are over. Once you're past 16 megapixels, you're done. If you're going to go higher resolution, now, unless the technology improves. But if the technology was improving, Canon and Nikon, would, they're kind of on the leading edge of this. Pentax is always a little bit behind, right? So if, they, if, they, if, this, if you're going to see a breakthrough, it's going to happen in Canon and Nikon first. Canon and Nikon are going to release the D5, the Nikon D5, and it's going to be 24 or 36 megapixels, and then you're going to know that they can do high ISO with higher megapixels. But that's but but as of right now, that's not what happened here with the K5 to the K52 to the K3. It's not what happened with the D300 uh, D300 with the D800 and the and the D4. And it's not what happened with Canon with the uh, 5D Mark III and the 1DX. And so that's what's going on. Um, <clears throat> another thing that I'd like to address that I've seen some comments on. Uh, the, the, the K5-2S is a great camera. Just because the K3 does a few things a little bit better and a very few things a little bit worse, <clears throat> but the, the K5-2S, you know, this, by this camera, the K3 coming out, it didn't make the K5-2S instant garbage. And if you can pick this camera up for seven, eight hundred bucks right now, I think, I, honestly, we're at the point where, surprisingly, Pentax shouldn't discontinue the K5-2S. They should continue to sell it. The 
best, the, right now, if you want to have all your bases covered where you want the ho best high ISO image quality and then have a camera that also has the best low ISO resolution, you need both, okay? Or you need to decide which is more important, excellent resolution and very good high ISO capability, which is what the K52S is, or absolutely the pinnacle of resolution and a little bit less high ISO quality, which is what the K3 is. So we're kind of, I mean, we, Kipentex should not discontinue the K52, K52S. It, the, these are two, they're, they're almost two different cameras. The, again, I'll come back to the guy on the forums who said that, you know, they need to release a K3S or something. I don't know what they'd call it, but it would be the K3 body with the K52S image sensor, the 16 megapixel sensor with the on-demand anti-aliasing filter, and then that would make sense. I mean, there are people who, who don't shoot low ISO and need ultra resolution. There are people who need high ISO, low noise, but they want the better autofocus. Okay, I think I beat this one to death. Um, it's a perception thing, and this stuff, this stuff is real subtle, right? It takes 30 years of experience. Again, I'm not, you know, but... To, to, to see this in perspective and to, and to, and to ha have the big picture uh, so that you can kind of see how this fits together and what's going on here. And hopefully I've done a decent, if not somewhat long-winded job of explaining what some of the issues are here. So that's where we are in terms of like the K3 versus the K52, K52S, and with some of the issues in terms of why people are thinking that the, the K3 is not sharp. Um, so I, I hope that helps clear the issues up a little bit and put some of this into perspective. Ed with Photo Universe, have a great one.